back at you with another episode coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com. Offer of Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. Like, share the video when you come in. And tell me where you're from. Let's see. So most of the time, you know, I have a special guest, guest, obviously, as y'all can see. You know, most of the time when I bring people on, I usually give my own uh, intro. But this time... I'm gonna let you let y'all do that. <laughs> so, oh, <okay>. thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, of course, you know I've been following y'all for about uh, at least a year on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think I think you're. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't really know. No, I don't know anybody that uh, follow you or anybody that's in the lifestyle so to speak but your pro- your profile stuck is stuck out uh compared to the rest so i just started following you you know and i was like that was interesting you know how, how y'all go about doing things and uh so you know uh so just tell my audience a little bit about you okay go ahead <laughs> okay, put it on me. Hi. First of all, thank you very much for having us. We were excited to be here. Um, gosh, we're just kind of regular people living life um, as an adventure. And um, it started out uh, very uh, normal, I would say. <laughs> we were we met and married in college and in Bible college, nonetheless. Um, we're very religious and then kind of uh, made some transitions. And now we post naked things on Twitter. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> yeah. we've been married 25 years, though. So it was a long progression. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. We were that, yeah, we, hey, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, like, go ahead. that's like today. That's like rare. Yes. It's a, yeah. It, it's there's the club's not as big as it used to be. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah. No, we. We, we got married young. We got married when we were 20. We met in Bible college. You just mentioned to both very, very poor, grew, grew up poor families. Both of our parents stayed married. Uh, my dad had divorced prior to our family and all of my sisters, but uh, parents stayed married. Hers did as well. Um, this is not something we learned from our parents at all. <laughs> Maybe the, <laughs> the staying married side. part, but not the other part yeah. at all. Yeah. And that's that's truly our hope. You, you said that, that what we do stands out. We, it's not that we want to stand out. It's that we want to be us. We don't want any of it to be fake, yeah. any of it to be unauthentic. It's what we do. It's who we are. We get asked all the time, hey, can you make this video? No, just not what we do. I'm not trying to be rude. Just not what we do. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. There's no bananas, you know, <laughs> cucumber. None of, I don't know what you do with that crap. But <laughs> I'll make a meal. But no. just the, the things we get asked a lot. And, and sometimes we know that that pushes people in. It's okay. There's lots out there. There's plenty of content to go find. It's just not who we are. We grew up very much. um, When people meet us, if you met us not on Twitter or Reddit, (laughs) uh, when they meet, when they, yeah, well, when people meet us not on those forums, they they usually have no idea. We're business owners. Yeah. Um, I try to very much be a gentleman. She's very much a lady. Uh, Love conversations. Love engaging. Love small groups. Don't like parties, don't like big crowds, but love to go to a restaurant, a few people, have long conversations and, and enjoy life. But we also like to have fun and, and we, we like to explore is what we say. It, we call it, we talk about the lifestyle or swingers. We don't really I say that we're either of those things. We do some of those things, but we like to explore. And part of that exploration is people and people are, are the most fun to explore. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't even know it was such thing as a lifestyle. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know where the the labels came from. I just met people, and they said, "Hey, this is how our how, this is how our relationship is." I said, "Oh, okay. You know, I've never met anyone like y'all before, but okay, yeah. <laughs> y'all are a bit crazy." Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I didn't. You know, I was young. I was in the twenties at the time, so I didn't really know it was a 
thing until I was about 32. And then um, somebody told me, hey, I'm, I'm going to the swingers club. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Like adults on playgrounds? That sounds Sorry, fun. That? You know? <laughs> and, then they, and then I met other people and said, hey, I'm going to a, a, an adult party. I'm like, what's that? I don't know. What, you know? <laughs> so to me, it was like, I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know you call it. I didn't know there was a label attached to it. I just yeah. knew that there were people out here that were just living their life and doing their own thing and having their own relationships, however they see it. You know. Yep. So where? So where you're? Where you're originally from? I grew up in in Oklahoma, uh, south of Oklahoma City. Yep, I'm from Denver originally. Ended up uh, in Oklahoma for college, and that's where Brad snagged me up here. Yep, we were married at twenty. I and... you up. You were here. I just <laughs> didn't, I didn't let you leave. <laughs> That's right. That was all. When he when he saw you, that was it. That was all she. That made. was it. That was it. <laughs> so, okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, as far as your relationship, you would be considered to the most people as open, right? Yeah. Again, it that's be, this is such a wide net. Um. You know, it's like saying, hey, I like football. Well, do you like high school football, college football, pro football? Are you talking about soccer? What are you talking about when you say football? And it's not dissimilar to say these things here. Our our, our relationship to, to people who have an open marriage, we would not be considered open. Open marriages typically mean that both can go do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, with not a lot of communication between the two. We're not that way at all. Mm -mm. Yeah, all I didn't even know that. Yeah, all the things that we do, we do together. Um, oh. and, and it's been that way a long, long time. We've always worked together. Um, we've always had, well, I mean, we always had really good relationships. We didn't know that sucked in the beginning like they all do because we didn't know. You know, the first year is the first year and it's kind of rough. Uh, and, the, and the fifth year is great, but the tenth year is better. And it just keeps getting better because you keep getting to know each other better. Yeah. Uh, so in the open relationship, we don't just run off and do things. We're not open to go do anything. Um, we talk about everything first and, and we have one, one rule in the, in the game that we have is the other person, the opposite sex always has veto. So if I say, Hey, I think this girl's hot. I'd like to talk to her. And she says, no, it's no, there's no questions. We don't argue it. She's out. And it's something we learned a little bit the hard way that, um, I don't go ahead. Right. Well, because we learned that, uh, the opposite sex doesn't always see what's going on. For instance, um, I saw a booty. <laughs> yeah, he's checking out this hot lady. <laughs> In the meantime, this lady's giving me the bitch eyes like I could take your man. <laughs> and I'm giving her the rah. And he might not see all that going on. So I don't see any of that. Um, and, and vice versa, the same with gentlemen. I'm yeah. I'm thinking he tells me I'm pretty and I like it. And and he's like, oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah we, both he's, sexes he's, can be territorial in their own ways. Right. And I tend yeah. to pick up on a guy doing that, and she picks up on a lady doing that, where I wasn't paying attention. I was flirting. So. Right, right. So we learned that's a good rule for us. That's, yeah. We try not to have a lot of rules, but that's that's an important one for us. Rules make this hard. You, you said rules. Yeah, for yeah for us, and, and a lot most of the experiences we have with other people when they get in the most trouble is because somebody broke a rule. So you get into a situation, and there's, three of you, four of you, whatever. And you can't plan for what's going to come up. I mean, things just, you know, and so sometimes something you're having fun and it goes a direction you didn't think you would. If you had a rule, you couldn't do it. Now you got to either shut it down or you go ahead and do it. But when you do it, you just pissed your partner off because they didn't expect it. And you left them out thinking we weren't doing this. And then you did. And the rules can get you in, can get you in a much more trouble. Not that you should just be laissez-faire and anything goes. We we have boundaries that we that we stay within, but just rules for the sake of rules or can can get and we broke a lot of them. We this was not easy. When we first got into this, there were lots of fights figuring this out. We both knew we enjoyed it. We enjoyed the experiences with people. It usually wasn't and in, in our experience, a fight between us is never someone else's fault. That's our fault. Mm. That other person gets to be who they are. We want them to be. But you and I had an agreement that one of us broke. That's the problem. It's not what they did. They were doing what they're supposed to. They're chasing booty or tail or flirting and having fun and doing what we but one of us did something we said we weren't going to do. Now that's an issue for us. Right. 
And somebody went into it, you know, making lots of rules. And <laughs> yeah, then, she's a little rule maker. And then, you know, they, they say rules are meant to be broken. Well, she uh, broke all of them. Yeah. Uh, Just not knowing what I was going to get into when I got in certain situations and things I didn't know when I made the rules. And yeah, so. she, had, she had rules for a while. We don't kiss people. And I'm, really thinking, I'm like, what's it, what's it called <laughs> when your lips are touching? Because y'all were doing a lot of that. And I <laughs> hey, thought, why, it hey, why, why is that? Well, initially, I thought kissing was very intimate and bonding, and I guess I was afraid we were just going to fall in love with those people and <laughs> run off, I guess. I don't know if we kissed. Um, so then I found out real fast that, um, yes, kissing can be that, but actually it can be a whole other thing. So, And I really like kissing. Yeah. So, so, now. so when did y'all decide? I know y'all probably more than like y'all didn't start off this way. No. When did y'all decide that, hey, we're going to do this? We're going to go in this direction. I was more like you. I rolled into my 30s not knowing what the lifestyle was. or uh, I didn't even, I'd never grown up watching porn. I was very religious. I'm very sheltered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super sheltered. Well. And then, and then self, self-decidedly so later on. Like for our first 10 years of marriage, she would not say anyone else was attractive at all if i said that girl's pretty she was like oh my god do you want to have her babies do you love her are you leaving me and i'm like i thought she why was... am i not good enough yeah. i just <laughs> thought she was pretty i didn't know <laughs> so that that took a long time it was probably in our we were married about 15 years when this when this started uh 14 15 years right in there when we started saying hey there, there's things that happen you've been together that long and they're great things i mean after 15 years we've had a lot of sex Mm-hmm. And there's none of it's going to be new again. I mean, and it's not bad, but it's not new. I know every single move she has when she turns her head this way, when she makes this sound, when she moves her eyes, where she puts her hands. I already know where we're going. Yeah. And that that's fantastic. And it's home. And I would never, ever, ever want to replace that. That's not what this is about. But as a guy, every hot girl that walks by, I go, damn, I would touch that booty every time. <laughs> And then there's fun to get to go be able to do that because it's the it's the game of life, the chase where women kind of like to run and men like to chase them. And then once you catch each other, you do your thing, and then you, the game starts over. And and when you do that with someone new, it's exciting and it's thrilling and it's fun. But we 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 get into monogamous relationships, and after a while, we wonder what happens. Well, what happens is while we love each other very very much this is not new and exciting anymore. And people talk about the seven year itch and what happened. I mean, well, what happened was you didn't know when you got married that sex is not always going to be like it was that first year. No, but we don't talk about it because it's taboo. So we don't talk about it. We don't fix it. And still we fight and we come and we, we end up separating and we end up apart, which right. is not a fun place to be. Instead of knowing that that's very normal and it has nothing to do with how much you actually love each other. Uh, there's a very real thing that happens in a new relationship and hormones and excitement and drama, you know, all the things. And, and we kind of feed unknown. on that as humans, I yeah, think. So the only exploring that. The, right. What 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 happens if I do this? Oh, don't do that again. But what happens if I do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, so, the be- I think the best thing about marriage is you can have any type of marriage you want. Yes. Really? That's the best thing about it to me. I, if it's not hurting us. Yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. You know, but I, at the same time, a lot of people are very, uh, I guess, closed minded because, you know, they yeah. a lot, let's take that from a guy's perspective. Guys, a lot of guys want to see their wives in a certain way. Yeah. And if she bears off. <laughs> There's like a balance. It's a weird type of psychology a lot of guys have. That's like yeah. a balance that they have when it comes to their wife. And if she goes too 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 much to the right or too much to the left, it's kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And and we see that it, when you get in these circles where people are free to do some things, people think, oh my God, it must be great. And it is, but it also it gets bad very fast. It certainly because can. When you when you hurt somebody's feelings with your clothes on at dinner, talking about normal stuff, it's a normal hurt feelings. When you hurt somebody's feelings naked, doing the most intimate thing you can do with another human, it gets it escalates <laughs> very quickly. Mm. So 
Yeah. And you see that happen. You see people get into this that, that shouldn't. And I'm not saying they should or they shouldn't. I'm saying it wasn't good for their relationship. It ultimately ended yeah. up hurting them or they hurt other people. And they, it, it, it's not what most people think it is. It's not laissez-faire. Everybody has sex, goes home. You know, no. it's, not, it's not a Disney movie. No. It's, it's, There's a lot to it. It's certainly. a ton of fun. It can, yeah. be very, it can be very rewarding, very enriching. It was for us. I, we talked a lot. We always have. I, I mean, like a freaking ton. Um, but we had no idea what we weren't talking about until the first time we did this. And then it opened up conversations we did not know existed. And we were like, holy shit, we thought we knew each other. Yeah, exactly. Because um, that's and that's another thing. A lot of people, they really—I think a lot of people really don't know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't. Really, and a lot of people really don't know what they want or what they like. Yes, and something we see today a lot is a lot of those people think that they have to leave their person to go figure that out. We thought, why would we not take this journey together? It, right. Exactly. It, Single sucks, in my opinion. I think single sucks. I don't want to be alone. It would suck for me to go have the best day on the on the on my life and come home and I get to tell it to my wall because nobody else is here to share it with. Or and I don't like sleeping in a cold bed. I like on this journey that's life, I've got my best partner I get to share everything with. Yeah. And then sometimes she says, I don't like you, go play with a friend, but then come back. (laughs) <laughs> and she's still my best partner. And, and we do those things together. We do things, I mean, not, not sexually separately, but we, you know, we go hang, I go hang out with the guys. She goes hang out with the girls, but 95% of our life is together exploring this journey and learning things and yeah. getting into these types of things. We realized there was a depth to people and relationships and things that we were missing that we never considered giving ourselves the opportunity to explore. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know, for sure. Until you have the experience, most most of the time, you know. Yeah, I had a hard concept. We used to ask where this started. My concept of this started in college. Uh, we were in seminary, and it was difficult for me to fathom that it's only possible to be deeply uh, in love and care for one person ever your whole life. Because I'm thinking, if this is the way life works, oh, okay. we could we should only have one kid. We should only have one parent, uh, one spouse, of course. I mean, everything's got to be onesies because obviously we don't have the capacity to handle this. So it just doesn't make sense. And yeah. I would, when he would talk about that, I'd be like, Rah. "What do you mean? You only find your soulmate, and that's it for the rest yeah. of your life. Don't even look at another woman." You know, I was very, very insecure and jealous. So I couldn't, it took me years to even fathom that thought. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those concepts come from religion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I always. And Disney. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I I was just saying, and Disney, you know, all the. the Fantasy. (laughs) Right, right. You grow up, everything ends happily ever after, and you never talk about the rest. That's what I always tell everybody. Do you know why? Do you know why things always end in a Disney movie when Happily Ever After starts? Because they're not even good enough to pull that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the conflict, Happily Ever After, movie over. Because mm-hmm. it's fantasy. Right. Yeah. I always say um, one of everything, for the most part, is a bad idea. <laughs> I, I mean, think about it. One of almost anything is almost a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, one I income, it. one job, one shoes, one car. <laughs> you have to get very secluded to get there. You have to get very closed-minded to rule everything else out, and this is the only thing in any in any scenario. Yeah. I, I'm like, man, I don't know, man. Why why have to have one thing all the time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the part of the reason we're we've started um, we started a podcast and some of the stuff we chat about is we have fun online. That's a different. That is a per, that's a. I mean, it's who we are, but it's a yeah. part of who we are. Mm-hmm. We're also business owners. We've started thirty or thirty five companies. We own our own companies oh. now. We've um, we're entrepreneurs. We both grew up very very poor. We live through uh, literally every income bracket. I can tell you the top brackets are not the best from experience. We thought it would be. It's not. The more shit you have, the more you have to worry about. 
the more you have to take care of, the more you have to pay for. And everything you have takes a slice of time. Yeah. And eventually you it get adds to the a point, layer of stress. Yeah. Where we realized we, a couple of years ago, we said, you know what is enough. We started selling things. We downsized. We live in the smallest place we've lived in, in 20 years and fucking love it. Absolutely. We're in the best spot ever. Right? I mean, it, the things weren't what were making us happy. They were actually the things that were detracting us from being happy. Yeah. Right. I always say, a wise man told me, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, I guess what inspired you to, the, uh, Hey, what inspired you to come online, period? Because you know, some you could have easily stayed, you know, in the in the stayed away offline, you know, all together, you know, and just some people, you know, they kind of you know, they they're kind of stayed behind the scenes or in the closet. They're mm -hmm. like uh, you know, what made you come online, period? <laughs> <laughs> Just <playing. Me>? no. <laughs> the closet there's not much to explore in the closet um yeah. there were two sides to it um two steps to it i guess um i don't know how you even you can share how you even started posting the first thing but yeah. i can share my reaction yeah we started uh, <laughs> I, she for, for a long long time we were in the church she dressed very um horribly well, she was 25. Well, and she looked 70. She had no makeup. She wore homemade clothes. It didn't, it was not, it was not going well. Baggy as could be. Yeah, it was bad. You could not show off any curve whatsoever. You might make a man lust, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. She wasn't even making me lust, and I was trying hard. Well, <laughs> hey, to some guys, they would be like, hey, that's a good thing. No one's looking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that, I'm happy for them. Live your life and be happy. But that was not for us. Well, at the time, I, I, it's a whole story, but I thought that's what he wanted. So I was trying to be, you know, really between God and my husband, yeah. I was trying to really communications. Yeah. Big time miscommunication. So I took a couple of pictures of her. We started, she started dressing a little bit more, uh, sexily and I took a picture or two and I posted it back in the day on Tumblr. Um, and, and I, told, we're old. I said, Hey, I'm going to post this picture on Tumblr. And the first one was like her in like a bra and panties which was really risque for the preacher's wife and, you know, seminary graduate parents are preachers. And she's like, okay, do it. And I did it. And then she's like, did you do it? Don't do it. I'm like, I already did it. And then she looked at it. She's like, oh my God, that we found out how much she loves being seen. She's a huge exhibitionist, but she, oh, would, yeah. nev she would never oh, post yeah. her own material. She still won't. I have to usually take and post the photos. She won't. She's like, I am not going to be that girl being like, look at me. But if you post oh, okay. it, I will enjoy when they look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then um, I think I really understood how much I loved uh, being naked <laughs> when we went to a clothing optional resort. And I took to that like fish to water. And I was like, why do we have to wear these clothes? Yeah, we Darn showed it. up at this resort. <laughs> so. and, and as we're checking in, some dude walks by free balling. And she's like, I am not getting naked. I'm like, whatever. I, you don't have to. I don't care. So literally 10 minutes later, they walk us to our cabana. I put the towels down, turn around. She's naked. I'm like, what the hell happened in 10 minutes? And she's like, I decided to hell with it. We're here. So she just did it. I We, we had a hard time getting her dressed to go to the airport. We're, we're trying to leave. I'm like, babe, you got to put clothes on. She's like, this is bull crap. People need to open their mind. This is ridiculous. I'm like, you have to get your clothes on or we can't leave. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So freeing. <laughs> well, that's how it started. Just posting some pictures online. Yeah. Now, what type Started. of response y'all did y'all get in the beginning? Well, fifteen years ago, I mean, for what fifteen years ago was, it was pretty decent on Tumblr. And, and remember, not long after that, a few years later, you know, Tumblr was worth one point three billion or something like that. Then they banned porn, and a few years later, they sold for three million. Was not a great decision for them. But when they banned, so it did, it did decently well on Tumblr. Of course, we weren't, we'd never showed face. We lived in a small town. We, we were much less um, bold than we are now, um, but pretty good. And then we, they banned porn on Tumblr. We ended up at MeWe or something and a couple of other places that just weren't that, weren't that great. And then we ended up on Reddit and Reddit did really, really well. Um, and then on uh, Twitter and so and, and that always that always went really well. Most of the people that, that follow us um, 
or that we chat with quite a bit are they like they like the they like the realness, the authenticity. It's not all posed photos or not watermark. It's never, ever, ever a face filter. It's just who we are. If it's not sexy to you, I get it. I see stuff I don't think sexy. I just keep scrolling. Just block That's us or do. scroll on, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do we, do y'all ever run into people out and about in public? So much. Oh, really? <laughs> Quite actually. Yeah, way far, far, far more than we would have thought. We actually had. We had a, a girlfriend um, for a while, and we we didn't realize. Well, again, we should have followed rule one, which is Corey has veto, but she didn't exercise it. So we pursued a relationship for a little while that was a train wreck. But it was fun, good stories now. But we went to Vegas, and while we were in Vegas, oh, yeah. we, were, we were in Caesar's Palace. We had three or four people walk up to us. We go to San Francisco, people send us messages or say hey. Almost everywhere we travel to, somebody will come up and say hey. We recognize you as our UBC Flyers. So it, it's been more than we thought a lot more than we thought but on this trip this girl the girlfriend got really kind of jealous and like you yeah. need to start me a twitter and start me a, a reddit and i want an only fans and i want to be more popular than y'all because i'm sexier and we're like oh shit should have been a sign right there okay, you've missed Booger the boat ass. already so, <laughs> i mean just saying that is not attractive so yeah. um that it didn't end up lasting a hell of a lot longer but um it, it was it it happens quite a bit and, and we, enjoy, we we'd prefer people just come up and say hey and the people that do hell sit down look we're grabbing a meal. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. 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 Um, a town like Vegas and, uh, you know, I lived in Atlanta up until two months ago and, um, I, I, I used to see people a lot in Atlanta and yeah. most people, they didn't, they wouldn't approach me though. They, well, most of them would just give me a look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smile. And I hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Or you get that, you get that. Do, do I know you? But they never finish it and they move on. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we get probably 60, 70%, maybe more, maybe 80% of the people will send us a message later. Because Corey's yeah, all that's like, weird. I'm like, hey, hey, I saw you yeah. at Target. I was wondering yeah. you didn't say anything. Corey's all oh, the time. She home. She's like, yeah, I got Home Depot and a guy here. I'm pretty sure they saw us. We're probably going to get a message. And then we do. Yeah. Uh, so. Staring us down. <laughs> so what? What made y'all do a podcast? Because I mean, y'all could easily, uh, <laughs> could have easily stuck with Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. There's, there's more, uh, and, and that's what it is. There's more. There's more for us to explore. There's more. There are more conversations that we want to have. Um, we're really not just skin deep. Uh, the 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 Reddit and the Twitter are for sexy fun. It's for just, it's for, you know, putting stuff out there, chatting with people back and forth. But we, again, we do a lot more than that. So, well, we just also started to get so many questions. Yeah. That's well, how did you get into it? Well, how did, how does this work? How does that work? Um, would you meet my spouse? Would you guys go to dinner with us? Would you tell us how you did it? And so we thought, right. Just tons of questions. And initially we tried to answer all of them. <laughs> and after a while we were like, I just don't have time for this, but well, go ahead. We tell people this a lot, and and some of the people that are on know and they understand, others don't. And I tell them we 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 field about a thousand questions a day. That's not the forum we're going to sit and have this long drawn out conversation. We don't have time. We won't get our job done. So yeah. So it's been fun to share that. Um, not that we're trying to recruit people by ever. any means ever. I think there's a lot of people that should probably not do this. In fact. Um, but it's just, it's fun to share our lives and we can answer questions. And a, a lot of it were like, um, this is what not to do. <laughs> Hopefully you learn from our experiences. <laughs> We've got a lot of stories. So yeah. Yeah. Really I, Go ahead. yeah I think, um, you know, like I said, a lot of people like, for example, a question that I get a lot is, Hey, guy, a lot of guys want to do a threesome. And I always say, look, it might sound good. You know, in your in your mind, but when you when it when it's time to go through with it, yeah, it's not the same. Right. <laughs> no, it's 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 certainly and and I'm I'm a there are a lot of things that are popularly that are that are uh, maybe pop cultured sexual right now that aren't to me. Two girls making out to me not a turn on. Guys love it, drives them wild. Um, not my yeah. thing. Just never has been a threesome. Not my thing. I'll do them. We have done them. They're fine with another girl. With a guy, it's a lot of fun because I'm getting to to enjoy play with Corey and Weiss and getting to see things at the same time that I get to do, but I don't get to see, and that's hot. 
But for me, when there's two girls there, I don't want either one of them to feel left out. I'm like, okay, if I pay attention to you, then you, and I'm, I'm back in, and I'm like a kid with ADD. I don't know what to do. Uh, what do we do? So, they usually go pretty well. They're fine. They're fun. But that's not, if I had to, if I got to pick what we get to do, that's not the top of my list. Uh, neither are girl on girl stuff. Neither are a lot of the things that are very popular right now, but yeah. it's just not who we are. Yeah. I tried it twice. I said, it just wasn't, it's not for me. <laughs> well, and for guys, we, we, this is the conversation we end up having a lot more than we want to because guys get in it and they just don't know. When a thought runs through your mind, your other brain resets. Yeah. And there's a certain amount of time. I didn't even know this was a term until we got into this. There's something called a refractory period. And it is the, it is the physiological time in a male body that it takes for you to cycle. Yeah. So if you've been hard and you get soft, there's a, there's a reset time where your body says, oh, we're not ready yet. You got to give me whatever that time is. I'm about 45 minutes for me. Um, and I know that I'm out 45 minutes. Yeah. And, and things do run through your mind. You didn't mean to. And, and you're done. And guys get very embarrassed, performance issues. And, and we have this conversation all the time. Girls have it way easier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, I, just, I just keep smiling and we're good yeah. <laughs> right. so. yep. yeah yeah so um so most of the uh your friends uh, i guess couples i mean uh what well, do y'all have couples as friends or is it mostly uh just regular i guess quote quote regular people i mean yeah we have we have a pretty good blend we've got well here's what we found out as we got into this, we found out there are a hell of a lot more people into this than they ever talk about. Almost oh, yeah. every friend we had, when they found out that we were open-minded, we're like, yeah, we do that too. And we're like, mm, you little bastards. And we could have had this conversation years ago, but everybody's too scared to talk about it. Or so, we've been thinking about it, but we didn't know how to get started. Or, yeah. So yeah. We, we, yeah, we have friends all over the spectrum, like in everything. We have, we have friends across political spectrums, religious spectrums, sexual preferences. These are not preconditions to us being friends with someone we like people and what we look for is an intelligent engaging conversation absolutely yeah. I, don't, I don't care what side you're on i don't care what side i'm on i care that we can bounce off each other's mind that's how i learn i throw this thing out that i know and when you challenge me with information i go damn i was wrong or no i extra agree with me now and now i know why and that's that's what we enjoy Absolutely. Yeah. So where do you see things going from here? I mean, forward in the future. That's a good question. We um, obviously are having a lot of fun with our podcast and um, want that to continue and grow. Um, and I think eventually the other things, you know, uh, probably reach an age where it just probably won't be as popular. Although there's probably a geriatric porn. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, old people need love too, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe we could start it if it's not a thing, babe. For me, it's not. A, it's not about being sexual or not being sexual. It's about the exploration. Whatever's yeah. next. Uh, the podcast sure. we we do is um, we literally like to talk business things, politics, sex, drugs, religion, whatever, all the things that you're not supposed to talk about because they're fun. those are the things that matter. I don't want to sit and talk to you about the weather. I don't care. I can look that up in one minute and know what I need to know. Don't want to have a conversation about it. I don't like small talk. I don't like filler conversation. I'm the guy that will just sit there and say nothing because I'm bored. So I just check out. But if, if we want to, I want to have conversations. I want to have conversations that move my mind. Uh, we also come from things with with a perspective, and it may be a little bit different. I, I hear, but I don't. I don't think that I don't have the intention to help people. I don't try to help people. I don't think that's in my. I don't think that's in my wheelhouse. I think if I say something that you liked, it doesn't matter if you liked it or not. It matters if you decided to do something with it. That's your choice, not mine. You could have just as easily dismissed it. It could have come from a thousand other sources. So we don't. We don't feel like it's our life's missions to be counselors or help people. What we want to do is talk and have the conversation and go, we did that too. And what we found out is we realized I feel a lot more normal than I thought I would because a lot of people have these same thoughts or have these same experience or the same struggles. I may not be able to help you fix it, but just talking about it's helpful. And that that's kind of the way we approach things. So 
the sex thing, the nude modeling, the whatever you call it, it'll be what it'll be till it's not. And it's okay. There'll be something next. Yeah. It's not really about the destination, I guess, as they say, it's more about the journey. So just adventuring, having fun, living, being, deciding every day to be happy and, and do the things that uh, make us happy, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree 100. percent I like I like your podcast. I like uh, I like the topics, and I like how y'all have everything uh, you know, organized or whatever. You know, it's a, very different from um, a lot of other podcasts that you know, uh, you know that some of you know some of these uh, other couples they have they're very similar to, to you, but you know, but the way they don't have topics. They don't talk about things like you guys do. That's what I would say. You know, they just talk about, you know, uh, what they did last weekend <laughs> yeah. when they went to the party or something like that. That was something that the first couple of shows we didn't realize was going to be a hurdle, but we got a lot of messages after. And I think they thought we were just going to read sex stories online. Yeah. And we're much, I mean, we'll tell sexual things that happened, but, and, and honestly, I, I've never listened to another lifestyle podcast. And that's how I am. I get something, I research it myself, I go into it, I, and then I'll go learn what I want to know. But I'm going to dive in first, figure it out. And and our, I think our podcast is very reflective of just how we live life. It's we yeah. want we want it we want to tell you what we're going to talk about. We want to have a conversation. It's never scripted. We'll write down bullet points. Hey, tell that story. Hey, talk about this. You know, but we don't script it when we have guests on like yours. I, I was interested to see what would happen if you would send us, you know, an outline or topic. I, I like not scripted. That's relational. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I'm not good at doing that. I, I, of course, I have a list of questions that I've been asking. I ask everybody the same questions. Basically. Yeah. But in a different way, of course, depending yeah. on who the person may be or whatever. But I, I can't, I have a hard time reading scripts. I, I, I like Because it feels well, think, canned. Right. And it comes across as dull, I think. Um, yeah, like a robot. Audience, so, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We just, yeah. That's not, it doesn't work for us. Yeah. yeah I, like things, I like things to be kind of natural, natural flow. Right, yeah. right. You know. That's so, certainly the goal. <laughs> yeah. So if every, so if people wanted to follow you, where would they go to? The easiest place to find where you might want to follow us is probably our link tree. And it's just linktree.com like everybody else. So slash BC flyers 2016. Uh, our podcast links are there. All of our other site links are there. Um, that's probably the fast. We there also, there is now we just started BC flyers 2016.com. So we started a website really just to catalog the uh, podcast because we do a video cast and a podcast, I think probably very similar to what you do. So if we use photos or overlays on the podcast, we'll put them on the blog for that podcast so people can see whatever we were talking about in the show. If they didn't get a chance to watch it or were listening in the car, they can go catch up later and take a look at what we were talking about. So either one of those places. Gotcha. There you have it. Like, share this episode. Tell me what you think below. Until next time, we out. Peace.